going to talk a little bit about the 2000 Watt Society case study uh, in Switzerland. And I would like to mention my colleagues from the Zurich University of Applied Sciences, Giorgio Eberwein, Evelyn lopsig kagi and Vicente Carabia Sutter, who actually worked on this uh, case study, but who unfortunately cannot, could not come to this um, workshop. So I'm going to do three things in my presentation. I'm first I'm going to tell you the story of the 2000 Watt Society in Switzerland. Then I will give you some more insights about this vision of the 2000 Watt Society and what it's all about. And uh, second, uh, third, I'm going to present some five key lessons learned that we have distilled from an interview with um, Roland Stutz, who is um, one of the really key initiators and pushers of the 2000 Watt Society in Switzerland. Okay, so let me start with the story of the 2000 Watt Society. So once upon a time, uh, Swiss researchers and forethinkers had a vision for a world in which energy resources are consumed in a more sustainable and fair manner. So they, ha they had the idea that every human being should have access to 2000 Watt of power. Um, however, every day, of course, Swiss people use much more energy than that. In fact, it's three to four times more than that. And one day, uh, politicians, researchers, but also the public realized that we cannot uh, continue like that. And because of that, um, politics decided to set energy saving targets. And also, big cities in Switzerland, for example, Zurich, they held um, referenda where they asked uh, people if they would want to have the 2000 Watt Society as being part of their legislation. And people, for example, in Zurich said yes to this. However, until we reach this target, there is still really a lot of work to do. And it's not only about energy efficient technologies, but it's more importantly also about changes of behavior and of lifestyles of people. So ever since then, politicians, authorities, SMEs, and also Swiss people are developing measures and are implementing very concrete projects to actually reduce the energy demand in Switzerland. So 2000 Watt Society, what's it all about? And 2000 Watt Society is it's not really intervention, but it's more a vision which can bundle very different types of interventions. And it has originally been developed at ETH Zurich, so it comes originally from an academic um, context. Um, the goals are, um, as I mentioned before, to have this 2000 watt um, per capita and not exceed one ton of CO2 emissions per capita and per year, and to have a more equally distributed um, global distribution of energy consumption. So what you see here these mountains is you have the United States with um, per capita around 12,000 watt. In Europe it's about half and in Bangladesh we are at the very low level and the idea of the, of the 2000 watt society is actually to balance this out. Um, 2000 watt society is really a long-term vision and um, they also have set some very long-term targets. So there are also some intermediary targets, for example, for the year 2050 and 2100. And um, besides really getting energy consumption per capita down, it's also about pushing uh, renewable energies. So I mentioned before that 2000 Watt uh, Society came out of an academic uh, context and it has really reached quite a broad political and societal support um, in Switzerland. So uh, 22 of our cantons, and in total there are 26, so it's quite a lot, um, support the vision of the 2000 Watt Society in more or less um, binding ways. And in several Swiss cities, uh, people actually voted for the 2000 Watt Society. And um, one Interesting example is, of course, the city of Zurich, where we had this public vote in the year 2008, where 77% of people said yes to the 2000 Watt Society, which is really a lot. So we don't usually, uh, in our votes, have these high shares of people saying yes or no. But there are also other cities, also smaller cities, like, for example, the city of Zug, um, which said yes um, to this vision. So let me now talk about uh, some key uh, lessons learned. 
Um, these key lessons learned, uh, we took them out of the interview that uh, C um, performed with uh, Roland Stulz. So Roland Stulz was uh, the CEO of uh, uh, Novatlantis, who was an institution, or is an institution, that really was uh, pushing the 2000 watt um, society forward. So the first one is uh, to create awareness with a concise vision, with a good name. And what is very important to him is, is to make it very concrete. Um, so to have these lighthouse projects where you also showcase what it means uh, to have a 2000 watt society. And uh, I just put here some examples. What you he see here is a very energy efficient uh, building of uh, EAVAC, which is the um, uh, Institute for Aquatic uh, Research Institute for Aquatic Science at, of ETH Zurich. And then we have, for example, this 2000 watt area, Erlen Matt West, which is in Basel, or you have this fuel cell uh, cleaning uh, vehicle also in the city of Basel. And there are also some certificates. Um, here I put the example of a green city, Zurich, which is the first um, area in, in Switzerland which got the, the label for a 2000 watt uh, area in the planning phase because it's still in construction. The same actually applies when commun uh, communicating and addressing the public. So it's important to specify what, what does the society, 2000 watt society mean for your daily life and to give advice or to, to also showcase examples of, of landmarked people and families. And what Roland Stulz actually stresses here that um, it's, it's not necessarily important to showcase people that are at the 2000 watt level because it's almost not possible in Switzerland at the moment, but to show people saying, okay, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I want to go there and this is what I do. So to, to, to really show, um, um, showcase cases that also have some cer certain identification potential, which, where you see and say, okay, ah, this person does that, okay, I can do this as well. Um, then in Switzerland, we have uh, two examples where different approaches have, have really worked out well. So it's um, the case of Basel, which was really more from a, a, top, uh, a bottom up uh, approach. So it was really driven by concrete projects <coughs> and the city of Zurich, which was more a top down approach. So it was in the city of Zurich, it was more the, the administration who set these goals and uh, there was this public vote and then the, the projects followed. So it's really both ways have worked out in Switzerland. And there's a last uh, key lesson learned. Um, uh, it was in, in, in this case, it, it seemed to be a good um, experience to, to start from a rather more technical approach, which can make things easier at the start because there is usually quite broad uh, public support for better buildings or more efficient technologies. However, then it's really getting more challenging because then it's also about people and the behavior change. But it seems to have turned out that starting from, from the technologies is, might be a, a promising approach to go then one step further. Okay, with that I would like to close and thank you for your attention.